All right, don't worry, guys. We'll definitely still get to that. And this rear end for the donor truck, for that truck. Well, now we're back and forth in between videos and we're just recording all over the place. I have no clue what's going on or where we're at. We got a lot of editing to do. I mean, we got stuff going on with that unit for sure. That unit, unfortunately, for sure. And then there's a little sneaker peeker back there. But yeah, right now today, we're on this unit. Tip of the day. You got a quick attach unit. Everybody gets off, opens these up, or lifts it all the way up, opens up from the seat. Yeah, to unhook it, you need to do that. But there's no point in doing it when you're hooking up. That's what it's spring-loaded for. So you just pick it up. Spring-loaded. I don't know why people are uh, getting off and doing that twice. That's kind of the point of them, being a quick attach. But, all right. We'll get this quick attach off, get my new one on, put the broom on, and then see where we're at. Just another quick tip of the day. The easiest way to put these quick attaches on and off, not that you'll be doing it a lot, since you get the point of the quick attach, is first, put this pin in your top collar. Your third link. Put the pin in, then you'll see. So see I have that down like this, usually it's back here. I'm holding it like this right now. Then all you do is turn the tractor on. Never mind. I'll just show you. Alright. We'll get these pins out. Easiest way to do this. So this is already being held up by this. Glow plugs and fire. So. turning out to be a beautiful day today and there's just another couple things that I want to run through on these compact tractors that might help you guys make things simpler show you tips and tricks that I ran into and I put on mine that definitely help make things go way faster we'll get into it right now starting off with the quick attach obviously that's a must but I feel like that's just common and every person subcompact tractor. But the main thing I wanna talk about is running one of these from the battery all the way back that stays. 
basically when I say stay is you put it on and leave it on. Most people, when I use a sprayer back here, they'll just run cords or wires, I should say, down into the battery every time and clamp them on. Well, super easy. Just run them back once in your lifetime. Then you have power back there all the time. And every year when you run a sprayer or anything, kind of like how I have my sweeper on that I'm sure you've seen in multiple videos. That's all I did is connect this to my sweeper attachment. So I have my power angle. A set of running clamps up here that looks not professional per se. So yeah, it's fusible links down there. And then it runs obviously down through here, comes up. Man, the sun is just shining. Comes up right here and I actually have a zip tie so it can never fall down. The lid is always held in there. And then it's clamped in. And then this, if you've seen my last video, you'll wonder why I have it double fusible length, but if I put my sweeper on a different tractor, I wanted this uh, fused also, but I really didn't need this for mine because I showed you up front, it has the fusible length. But for those that haven't watched my other videos and are just tuning in on this one, um, this wiring is just for my sweeper. So if you don't have one of those, disregard that. But it's just this wire to this right here. And then you have 12 volts for anything back here you wanna put on. And then it's not much else. Don't mind the mess, that's another video about the Husky garage cabinets. But yeah, this is another thing I added. I move trailers a lot, and even if you don't, this is a cheap setup to have all your hitches in one spot. One, you don't lose them, because they're all in the same spot. Two, if you're gonna use it, like I put a receiver on mine, not everybody's gonna wanna do that, but I have two of these now. One for PTO attachments and one for that. And like my box scraper and weight box still fit on with that. But you just, it's just so much easier. Instead of running and going, they're just there. There's not much else that's custom on this one besides, you know, options from the factory. I mean, this hat, the controllable deck, hydraulic deck from there instead of on the lever like everybody else's comes from factory, but like, Obviously lights are nice, but that's common too. I mostly just wanted to show you guys the 12 volt supply to the back to make life simpler and that, cause not a lot of people do that. But the only other thing would be a safety thing, which I don't recommend to do, but I did. Only cause I can't recommend to do it. Literally take a wire two spade ends, clip it right in there. And then when you're getting on and off your tractor, it doesn't shut off. Next thing, it's down right behind this cover, two bolts and then two screw bolts down here. Take this cover off and you just take a zip tie See if we can see it in here. It's gonna be hard to see, but you'll see it once you take it off. It'll be a pressure switch about right here. It goes in and out. So you can leave this in gear and you don't have to have your brake on basically to get off the tractor and or with your mower deck on when you hit reverse it doesn't i think that's the main thing when you hit reverse on the mower deck it doesn't shut the deck off so there's nothing more annoying the only way to go in reverse like it says here is you have to hold this down to go in reverse so that's the main thing it does when you take the zip tie all the way around that and pinch it together 
then you can go reverse forward, reverse forward, doesn't matter. It won't kick the deck off like it does from factory. That's the two extra simple things I did, but that's about it. Here's another glimpse of that wiring that comes up to your 12 volt supply. But that's it. That's just a couple of tips and tricks I learned with subcompact tractors. Letting you guys know so you don't have to deal with it. For the ones who are interested in everything that's been going on on my channel with the subcompact tractor. Didn't know I was going to be doing a series of videos on this because it's not the normal videos. But it showed a lot of interest. So here it is. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. I got this all hooked up. Wiring is all ready. And I had a... Uh, Seven and a half an inch. Seven and a half amp meters, and it popped. I'm trying to activate the actuator, which isn't a big deal, because this was only for them small battery tenders. And I hooked it in, so I already had this connector and a fusible link already in it. So it won't be a big deal. We'll shove this 15 in there. Alright, got her figured out. We put a 20 amp fuse in there. Now, she at least limits. If it goes too far instead of blowing the fuse, so. We got this thing dialed. wider than the old one and this way exactly how I want it now. These bristles are much better than the old one. And I have hydraulic tilt, well, electric to hydraulic. So yeah, look at them. Wires down there taped up so it's black. Good hit here with this new Raise this up right here so that don't get close, but I mean it doesn't need to go. It's still not touching there and it doesn't need to go much higher than that anyway. So I'm obviously not running it, but it runs right. Still did, that's pretty good. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, on to the next project.